There's a lot more going on with this exercise than you can likely see with this demonstration right here, but if you stick around with me for another minute or two, you're gonna learn why this exercise, when done correctly, can be incredibly effective for targeting and strengthening the subscapularis muscle if you know how to do it correctly. So, let's get to it. What's going on everyone? Welcome to another video. All right, strengthening the subscapularis muscle, the subscap, one of the four rotator cuff muscles, four muscles that work to control and fine tune movements of the shoulder. The subscap is pretty interesting in that it's the only one that stabilizes the shoulder from the front while the other three kind of do it from the rear. And subscap is oftentimes in need of a little TLC. So this is gonna be a great exercise to do if you fall into that category. Now the subscapularis is what we call a medial or internal rotator of the shoulder, meaning it works to turn the arm bone inwards, the upper arm bone is gonna rotate inwards. So a movement looks like this, like that, something like that. Subscapularis really helps to fine tune that movement. Now, what we're gonna do here for this exercise is we're gonna take a resisted version of something called the Kinetic Medial Rotation Test, or Kmart for short. We're gonna do a resisted version of this because when done in proper fashion, it's really gonna isolate this muscle. This is really good from a clinical rehabilitative standpoint if you just really need to target and hone in on subscap itself. Now, what's important to understand here as we get into this is that while subscap is a medial or internal rotator of the shoulder, it's important to understand that the job of the rotator cuff muscles, including subscap, is more to fine tune and control movement from A to B with the shoulder, while bigger, more powerful muscles such as the pec and the lat really generate the powerful movements from A to B, but the rotator cuff muscles really just fine tune or control that movement from A to B. And so what this means is we do this exercise here, you need to learn how to really keep your pectoral muscle quiet and your latissimus quiet so we can get most of the work done by subscap. So here we go. All you really need is a TheraBand that you can anchor behind you, or if you don't have a TheraBand, it can be a resistance band of some kind. You're gonna need a bolster or some type of pillow or other structure that you can prop your arm up on just so that we can, again, get the arm into an ideal position that will theoretically bias the subscap a lot more provided we keep the pectoral muscle and the latissimus muscle nice and quiet. So to do this muscle, anchor the band behind you and then set up your arm at about 80 to 90 degrees out to the side of you with your elbow resting on that supportive surface. You want the surface your arm is resting on to be about the height of your chest, somewhere around there. Again, just to kind of help precisely get to the subscap with this exercise. Now, as you do this, there's a couple of things you gotta keep in mind here. The first one is that when you rotate down, you only wanna go as far as you can until you feel like your shoulder wants to start to pop up off the ground a bit. Go as far as you can before this starts to happen. So the average arm has about 70 degrees of internal rotation. And if you go further than this, what's gonna happen is you're gonna use extra muscles and kind of get extra movement involved for the rest of the downward rotation. And that's not gonna be very good at targeting subscap. So go as far as you can until you feel like your shoulder wants to pop up, but don't let it pop up and then just control yourself back to the starting position. So that's the rudimentary way of doing it, but to get the most out of this and really isolate and pick on that subscap muscle, there's a couple of other things we gotta keep in mind. So the other thing you have to keep in mind is that there's some other muscles that are the big powerhouse muscles that want to really help out with this downwards rotation here. Now, in a functional type of uh, movement pattern, it's great to have the big muscles do this movement and then just have the rotator cuff muscles, such as the subscap, kind of fine tune that movement. But from like an, a rehabilitative standpoint or just really trying to strengthen the subscap if it's a little bit unhealthy or weak, well, we got to make sure that those other big powerhouse muscles are not helping out with this movement. So here's how we're gonna do that. To make sure your pectoral muscle, your big pectoral muscle in your chest is not doing the work, take your hand and place it just on the kind of outer portion of the pectoral muscle. And as you rotate down, you want to make sure that that muscle does not fire or get tense. And if it gets tense, that's okay because that's kind of our brain's natural way of wanting to do the movement. But as you learn to do this movement and keep that pectoral muscle whisper quiet, you're going to make subscap have to work harder to do more of the movement. Now, once you get really good at keeping the pectoral muscle whisper quiet, it should be staying nice and soft. You also have to make sure that the latissimus muscle, which is kind of on the back kind of side portion there, is also staying whisper quiet as well. And so to do that, what I like to do is I like to reach my opposite arm across and push my fingers down towards the very outer edge of the, uh, kind of the side of my back there into that muscle. And if I feel that one start to tighten up, well then again, I know that I'm getting that muscle to do a little bit more movement. 
So practice it, it takes a little while to learn how to shut that pectoral muscle off and the latissimus muscle, but when you do, and you can keep your whole shoulder relaxed, you'll feel something kind of deep within your armpit start to have to do a lot of work. And after about seven or eight repetitions, if done slow and controlled, you're really gonna feel that subscapularis muscle have to work. And it's an interesting feeling because basically not a lot of people know about the subscap muscle, at least until they have to rehab it or kind of learn a little bit more about the shoulder. But as you take time to practice this, it's worth getting really good at shutting off the pectoral muscle and the latissimus muscle for this rehabilitative purpose. Now, if you're not sure if the front of your shoulder is kind of popping up as you rotate down and you're not sure if you're going too far in the downwards rotation, all you have to do is take your fingers and just kind of place them on the very front or top portion of your shoulder. And as you rotate down, just go slow and controlled and pay attention to what point you feel like that shoulder wants to kind of pop up on you. As you rotate down as far as you can, you should feel like there comes a point where you can't rotate any further unless you let that kind of shoulder roll upwards off the floor a little bit to compensate and do a different movement. So that's really all that there is to it. Now, if you're a physical therapy student, I would say that it's worth learning about the kinetic medial rotation test at some point in time. Uh, I it wasn't taught to me in school. I don't think school really teaches it, but it's a really, really great way to learn how to assess an individual's ability to kind of dissociate movement patterns with the shoulder and to kind of really learn some other neat things about how they control and move their shoulder. It's been a game changer for me ever since I was uh, taught it kind of as I graduated school and signed on with the clinic that I'm at now. Really, really great thing to learn and start to use with people who have different types of shoulder issues. Now, don't worry about that little blurb if you are someone who's just here to learn how to strengthen the subscap, but if you are someone who's in the health professions, that kinetic medial rotation test is pretty cool to learn. Now, keep in mind that this is not to say that this is the only way to strengthen the subscap, but I happen to really like it just because when people do take the time to get good with it and kind of get that ability to dissociate muscles and movements around their shoulder, well, it's a great way to go after that subscap because a lot of other movements can a lot of kind of other times when people are trying to strengthen it, they're just letting the bigger muscles do the work. And so subscap gets to kind of kick back and relax and really not do a lot when we think that it is. So again, in no way is this the only way to strengthen the subscap. Uh, and it's more of a kind of clinical rehabilitative strengthening exercise. Uh, you know, when things get really healthy with the shoulder, then it's worth going into some more kind of functional strength training patterns and everything else. But if we just want to look at getting subscap alone, then this is a great one to do it with. So that's it for the video. Everyone keep taking good care of yourselves. Keep looking after one another. Keep looking after yourselves. Keep making great things happen. And I will see you in the next video.